Chris Hardy Barogana at the Academic Hospital is once again having food issues. That's according to some of the reports. Of course, the MEC also speaking about this during her oversight visit. Now, remember, there was the situation again last year, and now the MEC talks about some of the contractual issues there. But let's find out exactly what's going on, because in her oversight visit, she says that... Um, it's not an ideal situation that uh, Barra finds itself in, but there was no patient who went through a day without receiving a meal. So how are things looking on the ground? How thing held MEC? Nomandu Nkomo Ralihoko joins us live now. MEC, thank you so much for your time. Is there or isn't there a food crisis at uh, Chris Ani Barakanath Hospital? There is no food crisis at Chris Ani Barakanath Hospital. I was there today. I spent my day with the team. But we were sorting out a problem that may come, which was going to make us in the next two to three days not having food. So we had to quickly intervene in terms of assisting where we can. But on the analysis when we're having, we realized that there is poor contract management on the side of our contractor that was dealing with the issue of food. So there are challenges which are acknowledged, but immediately we had to stop that. And the other one is the issue of the capacity of the suppliers that we have at Para because they are not only dealing with Para, they are dealing even with other hospitals that are in the class type of Para. So one contractor is having uh, too much to chew, which I think it's a problem because Para is huge. So that's our analysis again that we have realized with Tim So is After that a reason? Pardon me, pardon me yeah. for coming in there, pardon me. Yeah. Is that no, the reason why we are here almost a year later? We are here almost a year later, but in March it was a different situation, definitely, because in March people end up going and buy bread for themselves. Yes. At the moment, we didn't go to that stage. Immediately we had to stop it before it happens. And But then we had to do the assessment that it can be the same problem or a similar problem that happened last year, even now repeating itself. What is the problem? That was my question when we had to go deeper into this yardstick that we used to do the assessment. And we said, what will be the mitigating measures? Then we come up with the plans together with the team. So I'm confident, stand, talking to you now, that that problem will not happen again at Para because we will be, including other institutions, by the way, we will be monitoring that, we will be assessing that and make sure that things don't go back to where they were before. Because another thing before, it was the issue of payment of suppliers. Now we have corrected the issue of payment of suppliers. Starting from this financial year, we have the finances that we'll be using to pay all the suppliers that were owed. All right. Them. Where we have suppliers that we owe them a lot of money, we are making arrangements for those. Uh, but I think I think it has been going so well in the last five months that I've been in that office here. So I have got two follow-up questions then on that. Number one, Mike Haywood yes. writes that. Uh, you know, in fact, let me stay with your last point, that there are some suppliers, and this he says he's told, um, you know, by some of those who are working inside the hospital, but do not want to be known um, and named, obviously, for fear of, of, of repercussions there, that some suppliers are simply not delivering because they're not being paid, and they, you know, you either maybe as a supplier asked to deliver eggs and milk, so because you were not paid for the milk, you're not going to deliver the eggs. So I suppose that it's not correct to say there are no payment issues we've paid the suppliers the last payment that has been done to all the suppliers that deliver food in our institutions it was the 20th of april and the 25th of april so we've paid those suppliers that we were owing them as i can put it mm. but when you are being paid definitely you must deliver so and it's worse when you are paid and then you don't deliver which is something that we need to do a follow-up even to the ones that we've paid, have you delivered after you have been paid? How much you were paid? And for the mere fact that those people are scared of being whatever, I don't, I don't think it's right. If you are not scared, you stand up and say, you, MEC, your officials have not paid the, the Bara Hospital. This is the amount, and please make sure that this is corrected. Why do you hide yourself and then you go to Daily Maverick? What do you think that Mark is going to help you? With I that? suppose. But anyway, we have a person that is there who's the CEO that is running that institution, which I think we have confidence in her. She has been running the institution for 16 years. So those are the issues now. If we need to correct that, we are correcting that with her. And I think I've All got right. the report and the report for me, it satisfies me of what she was saying. I'm going to come 
I'm going to come back to her in just a moment, but I, I want us to obviously think about, you know, when it comes to some of those who are speaking out, look at what happened to one doctor at Rahima Musa who came out to speak out about the problems there. He was suspended and after a public outcry and had to be brought back. So I suppose it's not far-fetched sometimes to see people not coming forward to speak about these things. But let's talk about another issue which is also in the public domain in terms of reports that, um, you know, certain food supplies, there were breakdowns there and doctors and nurses were forced to scramble to make a plan to feed patients. You say that it didn't go as as far back as, you know, as, as bad as it was before. But now there are reports mm -hmm. suggesting that doctors and patients may have had to intervene. No, it didn't go back to that level of people buying food for themselves. The person that is responsible for the management of the hospital is the one that had to make a plan if there is no milk. I'll just put mm -hmm. that example. And I'm not saying it was like that. Okay. But I know that it was not like that because... I was with them this afternoon, and in the morning I was there. There was nothing like that that people are seeing. So let's talk about the management here, because I was reading the statement that you put out, right, and, and, and that you were talking about earlier on. Contract management, poor contract management, and timely escalation mm -hmm. of matters where there are challenges. There is not enough in, uh, cold storage capacity to order food supplies in large quantities. Capacity of supplies, of course, you and I have just touched on that issue. It cannot be that it signals to someone who knows how to run this hospital. If once again, you're back here. No, I think the, this one, it's clear that it's not a fault. It's the issue of the contract management. That, but we're not referring to poor contract management. It's not a, we're referring to the contractors that we're managing. That even themselves are at fault here because you know that you have been given a responsibility to supply para with bread or with milk. Let me put but it that she's way. But she's the CEO. She's the CEO. And, and, and I suppose the buck stops with what her. So. What, no, you are right. But what she did, she has been reporting to me. Because even over the weekend, she's the one that told me that now MEC were running, we're going to run short in the next four days. We'll be running short of chicken okay. because of the supplier is indicating that there is not enough chicken. So it's her that has been reporting to me. Yesterday I was on the call with her. We indicated what is it that you think should be done. That's why we even resorted on the areas that now HOD and the, and the CFO, they had to advise her now with the team at Para that now we'll make sure that there is a person that supplies food within five days, not even seven days because we're under pressure now. We need to assist you. So she was reporting and we had to intervene. So I will not want to blame her. Even mm. the issue of the capacity that we see in the statement is the capacity of the suppliers that said they are unable to do the work. And we've given them in a lot of work because that's what I was raising to them. Mm. And it's not mm. even that was the one that has given them that tender to make sure that they are doing uh, about nine items that must be delivered at Para and not PARA alone, including other hospitals, because now PARA becomes affected because there are other hospitals that are amongst them that are working with them. But again, what we said now we're going to do is to review even this contract of the people that we've given them, because mm -hmm. I think that's what you want to know. What is the demise that you're going to do? After we have seen that you are going to go back to the problem that nearly happened in March, Review all of the contract is one thing that we must do. This it's clear they don't have capacity, and some are indicating that they are unable to deliver. For the mere fact that if you are not paid for a week, you say you are unable to deliver because you have not been paid. It shows that your capacity, you are not fit enough to deliver food in a hospital like Para. We can give you another small institution, but not a big one that you are unable to do that. But we'll be definitely be doing those contract reviews so that we ease up the pressure even from the team that is supposed to manage the hospital on the minor things now of running contract management and deal with the issues of capacity of the people that were already put there to assist us. But again, I was saying we need to mentor these suppliers because some of them, they are new in the game. They don't understand what is it that they must be doing. We can't assume that because I've been given a tenor at Barra to provide, uh, to deliver food or to deliver meat, it will be possible for me to do that. Maybe we need that assessment of checking. Are you capable? Where do you where do you stay? Do you have enough? 
a capacity on your side to ensure that you deliver what is expected by this big hospital like Bara. So those are the things we'll definitely do. And, and who, who, uh, and must, do, who must do the mentoring? It, it, it should be the supply chain, team, Because I always tell them that, you remember, I'm coming from the background of the Department of Finance. That's what we've been emphasizing to everyone when you get a contractor on site. Mentor that person if that person can deliver. Mm. It's your responsibility because now you took that person, whether you knew or you, you didn't know. But if the person is unable to deliver, assist the person. So you can't just say, you can't, you can't be able to deliver and you check the person out. So in so about 20 seconds, is expected pardon me, MEC, in about 20 seconds, uh, we, we're out yes. of time. Then yes. the, the fingers are pointing mm -hmm. at supply chain management as well. Mm -hmm. what, are they, what have they done? I'm saying that the fingers, if I'm listening to you, the fingers are also pointing then at supply chain. No, no, no. I'm saying they must mentor the people. This is something that it's my proposal to you that okay. when you realize that I'm unable to deliver, mm. mentor mm. me, make me deliver, make me do what you're expecting to do. And I think it's something that we need to do going forward. That's what yeah. I'm raising to you. All right. MEC, thank you so much for your time. And I do hope we speak again because um, and, and really get an update on this particular issue, because I, I, I know you know how serious it is, um, especially for quite a big hospital like Barra. So let's, of course, get an update on how things are unfolding there and even some of the institutions. But we do appreciate your time this evening. That was the Gauteng Health MEC, Nomandu Nkomo Ranhuku.